Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Metal Gear for the NES. In the last part we got captured again and now we're once again gonna fight this guy. I am the shotgunner. Nobody has ever escaped from here. Yeah, that's two different accents. Uh, but one thing you gotta notice about shotgunners is that first off, his rate of fire is much has been increased. But uh, once again, our weapons and equipment are in this room. You don't even have to punch the door this time as far as I'm aware. Once again, though, get rid of the transmitter in your bag. I'm not even sure what that does, but it's there. I'm going to assume it makes it that enemies can notice you more easily or something. Either way, the strategy to take out Shotgunner is the exact same. Hide behind the boxes, remote-controlled missiles to the face. Now, God, give him perseverance though. points, though. He tries to shoot through the boxes no matter what. And like in the MSX version, we want to head down here and grab card three. Though I think this was card two in the MSX version. I forget though. You think I remember because I recorded only that part of the MSX version like three days ago? But no. Either way, in the MS, uh, yeah, in the MSX version, this led to the prison basement area thing. Not so much here. The prison in this version is actually in a different building. Uh, as opposed to the three buildings in the MSX version, this version has four. The prison is more or less at this point as far as we're aware its own thing. We even get the body armor much earlier than in the MSX version. Up in this room we get... Once again, the bomb blast suit. Yet again, you need this, so grab it. And I recommend you grab all the items here as soon as you can, because otherwise you won't be able to return to here until you get uh, this version's equivalent to the compass. So grab it as soon as you can, because the last item we need to get in here for now is the enemy uniforms, which you're going to need a lot sooner than you'd think. Like, by the end of the part, actually. Yeah, it's weird, actually. Metal Gear on the NES, I think, is actually slightly shorter than the MSX version. I don't know what it is, but it seems shorter to me, at least. Either way, after you exit that building, you're gonna want to head east until you can go lo longer east, which is this screen, if I recall. Yeah. And enter this truck. It's not a requirement, but it's good for farming. Because like I mentioned earlier, last part, the NES version shares the glitch that if you gather a ammo type item in a room that has it, leave it and then re-enter, it'll respawn. That is the same thing with rations, so I ration farm for a few moments, Now that's why I now have six. And I recommend you do that, because rations are pretty good in this one. I think uh, in the MSX and NES version, they restore your health to max, as opposed to later versions where they'll restore it to a certain point, or by a certain amount. In this first truck, we got some plastic explosives, which I farmed to max out on. Uh, the metal truck is a transport truck. It'll take you to somewhere else that you don't want to go yet. And the lower truck is the one you want to go into because it has card four. Just a note, enemies will start shooting you again for some reason now. I guess they have phases of shooty versus non-shooty. I noticed they seem to shoot me a bit more after I get card four, though. And now we're back in building one. And uh, you gotta remember this uh, elevator. Now we're finally gonna head up to the roof. Because honestly, this is the best time to do it because building one, we're almost done with it actually. Uh, once we finish stuff on the roof and I think the second floor will be done. Big boss here. I forgot to tell you. There are window barriers installed on the rooftop. Search for a bomb blast suit, over. Yet again, like I said, in the MSX version, you needed to get past essentially a wind barrier. I still want to know how the hell that works. Uh, in the MSX version, if you headed south, you could get missiles. I'm not sure if that's still there. I've never headed south in this version. For right now, though, just head, head west and avoid all guards as much as you can. How did he not notice me? I think the guards are slightly more shoddily coded in the NES version. I'm not entirely sure, though. Coding is something I'm not exactly clear on with the MSX versus NES, other than two glitches that this version has. 
Although that reminds me of something I should mention. Uh, you may have seen it in part one's thumbnail of the MSX version, or, and maybe the NES version, I don't know, I haven't done part one's thumbnail for this yet. But the box art for the two versions is the exact same. However, what you might not know is that it's based off Michael Bean or whatever his name was as Kyle Reese in the first Terminator. Uh, one of his first scenes, uh, the scene where he's in that shop. The more you know, and knowing it's half the battle. G.I. Joe. That was a close call. Yes, it was. Thinking about it, though, now it actually makes sense why they named the th those robots the Arnolds, because they're basically Terminators. <laughs> Wow, actually, yeah, that makes much more sense. Huh. That's not the only time that Snake would look like a celebrity, too. In Metal Gear 2 uh, Solid Snake, he would look a lot more like Mel Gibson. And the suspension bridges are back. Once again, don't fall off of them. You die. Though the place they, they drop you is completely different. Now they drop you in the tank room. And the flying guards are here, only they don't fly this time, and so they're much less threatening. Though somehow, the guy on the left there will notice me by going down here. I don't know how he did that, but he did. But thankfully, since they don't fly, they're a lot easier to shoot. In fact, the it's the guns are much more useful, in my opinion, in the NES version. Either way, like the MSX version, blow this thing up with a missile, and that allows us to do things. Namely, grab an item that's technically not required, but I like having it, because I get very nervous in those areas. The mine detector. So now if you're not on a screen that has mines you have it equipped, you can see them. Also, at this point, I recommend you equip your grenade launcher. Just, just do it. It'll come in handy fairly soon. Now, one thing I want to talk about that you're going to see here momentarily is enemy pathing, or enemies in general, seem to be a bit slower in the M NES version than the MSX version. Because it'd be a lot harder to outrun them in the M M MSX version, in my experience. Heck, in this version, I can outright predict their movements. Because their pathing is pretty simple. Either way, next boss fight isn't the hind like it was in the MSX version, but instead is two guys on turrets known as Twin Shot. Way to beat them, stand to their right with a grenade launcher, throw ten grenades in their face. Pretty easy. I guess the NES just couldn't handle a hind in this area for some reason. After beating them, you're gonna want to head to the top left cell, not the top right, because the top left has a person in it, the top right doesn't. So, yeah. Now, one thing you gotta notice me doing a lot in this version, as I do right here, is I accidentally hit the start button to access the menu when it's actually the select button. That's because I'm used to start being the menu and select being the pause button like it was in Mega Man. That was a close call! Dr. Petrovich has just been moved to building number two. Building number two is located about 10 kilometers north of here, like it was in the MSX version. And now I'm back in the elevator because you didn't need to see me backtrack through the roof. And now I want to head down to floor two. And from here I want to head south. I could head west, but I want to head south. You might remember in the MSX version, this is where we first encountered laser barriers. Well, first you have to kill this guy. Get out of my way. This is where the laser barriers are, but the pattern as far as I'm aware is the exact same, so I'm able to avoid it fairly simply. And even then, since the enemies won't follow you from screen to screen, you can just run through the lasers anyway and just get into the doors and you'll be safe. Yeah, the NES version is a bit easier in terms of uh, traversing the environment. Uh, this isn't a card 3 door, this, this is a card 1 door. I was reading a bit ahead of my notes there. Yeah, though, due to some of the programming quirks, uh, the pathing the pathings that you can take around the NES version are a lot quicker than the MSX version, hence why I think it's a bit shorter of a game. You can ignore some of this stuff. And in here, by the way, is the card 3 door, so is the one on the left, which is the one I'll be taking momentarily. So you're gonna want card 3 and open this. And this guy's gonna belatedly tell us something. That was a close call. Dr. Petrovich is being held prisoner in a cell on the rooftop. No, he's not. And hey, at least now we're rank three. Yeah, you could you were technically supposed to talk to that guy before the guy I talked to earlier, but I do it this way. I'm the machine gun kid. Don't try to go any farther. Machine gun kid's actually a bit more different of a fight in this version. You could still use the remote control missiles, but I'm not going to this time because I have plans for those missiles. So I'm just gonna handgun bolt him in the face like this, and he's pretty easy. Yeah. Not much of a threat for a guy with an infinite ammo machine gun. 
Anyway, beating this boss doesn't actually get us much of anything. After heading north with Dorn with card key number one, we're going to get an iron glove. Theoretically, this is supposed to help you break down holes and weak sections of certain walls, but as you've seen earlier, we can do that just without the glove, so the item's kind of pointless. Also, we've had cigarettes this entire game, but I forgot to mention uh, what they do. Uh, they serve a small purpose, but you'll find that what that is at the end of the game, which is kind of stupid, but oh well. Kill him before I can sh just shock the floor like I just did, because otherwise I'll be in a lot of pain. This is a car three door, so use it. Come in here and get the IR goggles, the infrared goggles, which I've already gone through most of the sections that need them. There's still, I think, one or two sections that need them, but not much, really. No, I, kinda, I find it kind of funny how punching enemies would go from this simple three hit their dead thing to this really sophisticated and honestly kind of badass looking five hit combo and like three onwards. And here we get another guy. Nothing special to him, though. Oh yeah, that's another thing. Part 2, we're already ranked 3. Weren't we ranked 3 in Part 3 of the MSX version? And the landmine room is still here. I'm actually going to farm for more landmines here, uh, which is what I do after I exit the room. Oh no, they noticed me, but they're not firing their guns at me, which they have in their hands. Use it. Or walk it to my fists. That works, too. Really though, now we just have to head north and then east. I'm gonna head west a bit first, uh, coming up, but that's just so I can show off a little bit of an item room you guys would remember from the MSX version. Hopefully. I don't know why I'm checking out my menu here. I think I, meant, I, th I was thinking a bit ahead of it. I think, you need, I think you can only escape this room using card three. The roller's back, by the way, and uh, a bit of a programming quirk that the NES version has, I don't think the MSX version has, is that in rooms with rollers, if you access your menu, and then exit the menu, the rollers will respawn to their original position, so you can easily get killed like that, so watch out. Anyway, over here we got some ammo, and in the next one we got some plastic explosives, which I, as you heard by the music cut here, and this next music cut here, I farmed for Max, because I recommend doing that. I mentioned it pretty late in the MSX version, but one thing I should mention about, about ammo boxes is that they don't only replenish handgun ammo. They replenish all mostly non-explosives. Uh, they even uh, redo the grenade launcher. So yeah, that's a thing. And now we want to actually exit building one. We're, we are entirely done here. We never have to come back here. So get card four and head up north. And now we want to continue north to where the ration truck was. And I'm actually going to do another ration farm session there so I can have Max again. Because rations are good. Especially when enemies drop them when, you're at, when you have none solid. That's a really nice feeling. And now you're going to want to equip the mines. Well, actually, yeah, equip the mines and the mine detector. Boom, there's mines. Don't step on them. They hurt. And once again, we are against the tank. You take it out the exact same way you did in the MSX version. Mines underneath the treads. It takes 11 to kill it. Uh, the thing is about this boss, though, is that they added something, I think. First off, the firing rate still goes between the left and right machine guns. But I think they added the fact that if you touch it, it's instant kill. I'm not sure if that was in the MSX version. I never tried to go physically touch a tank. Though if you walk directly in front of it, it'll once again use its cannon, which, if it's not an instant kill, really hurts. So, uh, don't do that. Ever. Really, though, for a giant tank of destruction, it goes down pretty easily. Easily. Even easier than the one in Solid, which I didn't think was possible, because the tank in Solid was really easy. Get on your mine detector again, because the screen northwest there's going to be more mines. In a bit of a more complex pattern. This looks familiar. Big boss here. It's a roadblock. 
try to slip through wearing an enemy uniform. Enemy uniforms. Switch big boss communication frequency to 120.13. Over. Oh, that translation is glorious, isn't it? Either way, as he said, even though the enemies actually despawned because I used the transceiver, they'll respawn in a moment, though. There they are. I've got the enemy uniform. Okay, in we go, and you can pass by them. But with that, I'm going to need to end this off here. Thank you guys for watching, and in part three, we'll be checking out this new building. See you guys then.